But this vineyard, which is the Springvale Vineyard, is entirely um, Riesling. The reason I bought this property is that there's a fault line, not because there's a fault line, but there's a fault line straight through here, uh, pretty, pretty much running north-south. And on this side is red loam on limestone. Uh, and in this case, we didn't realize until more recently, but three to five meters under is Minterre Slate. But to me, this was the classic, if you like, um, uh, water vale uh, profile. Whereas on this side, it's basically hard rock and you get into a lot of shaly, uh, reddy brown um, uh, rock. So the idea was that I bought the whole property uh, to get, if you like, a classic expression of Riesling. And I planted this so six hectares, um, three uh, clones, which two are mentioned this morning, so 198 and 110, uh, and a clone I don't know, which was from a local grower. Uh, we've actually got more 110 than 198. Um, whether that is a contributor to, this, to, the, to the character of Springvale, it, it does influence to some extent. Um, we went to organics. Uh, full-blown organics in 2014, um, but we're in conversion from 2011. Uh, really prior to that, there wasn't any, um, we we're already doing organic, um, we were doing working organically. Um, and it's interesting seeing the straw this morning. I was reminded I need to mention that the two changes that occurred was a word that we cut out um, straw uh, because it wasn't an organic supplier and we cut out cow manure Again, it was an organic, uh, but not certified organic. And we just decided to run, we were using those two, the straw to, uh, well, the, 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 um, the manure to counteract the straw, if you like, uh, with the carbon balance. So we've cut them all out. We found that the crops went down a bit, say 10%. We now still shoot thin, so that was mentioned this morning, but we don't fruit thin. We used to fruit thin a lot. Um, probably taking the crop from 10 tonne per hectare down to eight or something. Uh, whereas now we're probably running six or seven tonnes per hectare. So it is true if people say with organics, are you tending to crop lower? Yes, but we save a lot of time and money because we don't fruit thin. And we think, the, well, we know that the vines are better balanced. Um, we, uh, we're spur pruning pretty much everything, but we're finding now that this was I didn't mention this was purchased in 1999 and all of this was planted in 2000. So we're finding now that we need to um, rejuvenate those vines by just cutting them and putting out canes. We're getting a better crop straight up with the canes, but I think as Steve mentioned about the exposure of the fruit, um, that it's not ideal, um, but we're definitely getting a higher crop the year that we do that, but we're really in the process of, of putting out uh, new, new wood essentially. Um, and, and I guess after 23 years, that sort of makes sense. Um, we, uh, it's interesting, the other one was of, of great interest on the uh, analysis and Brent mentioned, so everyone knows Brent, he has so been with us now, but what are coming up to watch stage? Yeah, so it's Apple watch time coming up uh, soon. Um, we, we pick at about 11.2 to probably about 11.5, but we're often targeting around that 11.2 area similarly. But with our conversion, we're getting, a, we're getting so if we do here 11.2 to say 11.6, we'll end up at about 12.6 to 12.9 alcohol. So, so we're getting a higher conversion than, than um, Steve mentioned for whatever reason. Uh, the current Riesling we'll try later is, uh, we think is what, 12, is that 12.9, 7.9 acid, uh, 301 pH, and um, it's about two grams of uh, uh, residual sugar. Um, and uh, what else on that? Oh, that we don't add any acid. So we haven't added any acid for on Riesling for, I don't know, more 10, probably 10, 14 years, something like that. So that's really interesting because a lot of people see that as uh, an Australian dash thing. Um, and certainly with the way, with where we're cropping and what we're doing, uh, we're looking at sort of 12.5 to 12.9 uh, alcohol and uh, an acid of under, we want to, we're aiming for 7.5 to 8. 7.5 would be ideal. Uh, and based on that, we, we're just not adding. 
I think the biggest thing, because I, I you know, I, I'm sure everyone can make up their own mind, but I get the feeling that, uh, you know, biodynamics is not for everybody. Uh, organics to me is like coming off a drug as pretty straightforward. Um, if you can do it, I think it's great. Uh, I never expected the, um, with biodynamics, um, been influenced by my neighbor, because you're looking actually over the Mount Horrocks vineyard, uh, and all of these plantings here, were, between us we planted about 16,000 trees. So when we came here, there was like a handful of trees like this, typically cleared as European approach was, uh, and we've since planted in shrubs and trees. We're up at around 16,000. So we're chasing biodiversity, you know, diversity and complexity of species for more stability. Uh, our carbon levels are up around four, whereas I think normally they're sub two, but we can get them higher. We know we can get them up uh, significantly higher, so we think that we're working in the right direction. Um, the point, I guess, without going into biodynamics too much, is that I really thought that we'd made big improvements with organics, um, and being able to work without any chemicals is sort of very satisfying to know you've got no residues in, you know, when you're working and making wine. But the jump in introducing biodynamics really shocked me because being sort of scientific or thinking I am, I wanted to see sort of more proof. You know, I wanted to do some and some not and all that. But really with biodynamics, it's a matter of jumping in feet first and embracing it. And the lift, I think, in the, in the, in the health of the vineyard is extraordinary. So I'm, I guess, as, you know, skeptics become converts tend to be, you know, I'm a bit over the top about because I'm really surprised uh, to be honest um, uh, that we've made it it could make after 42 years of being in this region and 25 uh, 35 years of having our own vineyards um, I'm surprised that we could make that much of an improvement so I think it is worthwhile but I'm sure again it's not for everyone because it is a bit of extra work we do have a poo pit which should be called something else I don't know but it's down where you see a, a roof down there down the bottom it's just by there uh, and we do not only 501, but we do 502 to 507. But I won't get into that. I think it's probably best to, uh, if anyone's interested, please um, follow up um, with Matt or with Brent. Um, anyone but me, really. I've suggested, but <laughs> not really. Because uh, uh, there is a, a lot to it, and people can, you know, really get into it. So, is there any? Um, I'll just make sure. Uh, but while I do this, make sure because I made a note while Steve was talking of anything else. Um, is there anything else that uh, anything anything that anybody wants to ask? You say much juniper. <clears throat> yeah, uh, yeah. So on riesling specifically. Oh, riesling or reds, really? I'm just wondering whether the organics and biodynamics have actually increased the resilience of the vines, and you're saying less uh, incidents than the rest of us might. Um, I'm not sure it's increased, but I notice. Um, it, it, it would be, it's significant, and I'm a bit surprised that, you know, we do have some, but nothing like, say, with Cabernet, or even Shiraz, but we do have a bit in, um, in the Riesling. Yeah, so uh, still, a, still an issue for you. Sorry? Beautiful's still an issue in the it's, Riesling. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a pretty minor, but yeah, still an issue. Yeah. yeah, it is an issue. Here's the man that can confirm that. He might give you a different answer. Um, so, oh, it's Lee. Okay, so um, so has anybody got yeah any anything else on does that? I, you're welcome to go wandering down here and see. You'll see that um, uh, the crop well, crop we're running here that'll be the other thing is is sort of around probably six, probably be six tons per hectare this year. Um, we're we're very happy if we can sit on that sort of level. Um, uh, we know that it used to be higher, but keep in mind that we all know that younger vines, younger riesling tend to more uh, and then they settle down but these are 23 years old so I think that it's quite stable um, we do believe that uh, that the organics in particular is something that this region can could champion um, and and biodynamics is something that uh, can follow keeping in mind that our all of our vineyards are certified organic and biodynamic A grade our winery is certified and our bottling line is certified so you need to do the lot really to make it worthwhile. Jeff, I've got a quick question. I might have missed it. Did you talk, um, comment at all about the row orientation? I didn't. Uh, and um, thanks for bringing that up. 
So um, there's nothing like a bit of controversy, but uh, this, this block basically f is uh, north-south. The rows are uh, north-south with a slight uh, hint of being north-northwest, south-southeast. So they're just slightly edged in that direction. So the whole design was actually for north-south. So that's one thing where there is a disagreement, I guess, between, um, um, between winemakers and growers because I just see the sun coming up and tending to go in that direction. Uh, and so I want to make sure that we will occasionally leave a bit more out on the west, but we've just slightly angled out the, the, the rows in that direction so that we're getting, we're getting just a slightly off north-south to allow for the ultimate in exposure. So yeah, I get concerned about um, I would prefer that any time to east-west. So it's just so a, one of those things. Uh, yeah, um, I think the thing about sunburn, I remember Richard Smart years ago said, um, it's like getting a tan versus burn. I mean, if you get, we want one to two leaves ideally between them and the, and the sun. The last thing we want is for those basal leaves to drop. Um, typically, if you've got a little bit too much vigour and we shoot thin, importantly, to get that exposure, the idea would be that we want to get um, uh, we want to get one or two leaves at best and no more, and we don't want to lose those basal buds because if you if it is too protected and then you lose it, you'll get sunburn. So that's the biggest issue. So so stress, and again, I think Steve mentioned about avoiding avoiding stress. I mean, avoiding stress on riesling is critical. Yeah. Oh. jump up as like a Shiraz will? Sort of uh, so all we've done is we've done cane pruning on the first, I don't know, 10 or something rows here and some cane pruning here, and then we're going to convert that over. So so we've actually run them out. Cut the, you just cut them as a, like a T at the top and just run the... Yeah. You haven't cut them off and brought them up? No. Uh, no, let me see. How do you do that? Yes. <laughs> so you've done... Um, Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so we and we we can see the difference straight away because the uh, it's so much uh, um, we get so much higher crop, but we have that issue that we're concerned about that exposure. That's all. Otherwise, we would do it to all of it and would be looking at bringing it up to ten tons a hectare again. I think, but it's just a matter of um, yeah reworking it. I think, and then we'll get back to spur pruning. 